I hope you're all here for the Burlington Wine Club. <laughs> <laughs> if not, you're in the wrong Zoom call. <laughs> okay. Um, for any of the guests that are here, I'm Teresa, and I'm the club song. And uh, so um, I have something to do with the wine selections. Um, anyway, that's me. So we are recording this session, um, but you can turn off your video if you don't want to be recorded. So we have a YouTube channel and we post this recording on the YouTube channel at, you know, over the next couple of days. So if you do not want to be seen, um, turn off your video. Um, you can ask questions. So there's a chat feature and you can type your question and then at different points, Marilyn will collect all the questions and um, she'll read the no, questions the, out. Oh. Pardon? Just working on muting everybody, so carry ah, on. Okay. So you can type your question. So I'm speaking of Marilyn. Marilyn is my co-host and she's the redheaded lady in Napa. <laughs> nice that she's there. This is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, but she'll be monitoring the, the questions and, and just giving us a hand. And you'll note that there are two different modes, speaker mode and gallery mode. Try the two different ones. It gives you different views. Okay. So speaker mode will be focused on the speaker and gallery mode will give you um, everybody um, that's here. Okay, so first of all, I hope everybody has a sparkling in their hand. Um, so I'll say cheers or sante. Okay. You can lift it, I can't hear you because we're all muted, of course. Um, and in a minute we'll get Steve to talk about what the, um, what the wine's all about. So last month we had Darlene Emberley from Unibins and Spirits, and um, I think that was lots of fun. Things that are coming up. So this is our last official Burlington Wine Club meeting for this year. Um, but November 26th, we have a virtual Christmas dinner. Chef Maggie is doing the food, and I've chosen three wines to go with the food that are optional. So it's already posted on the Burlington Wine Club website, but you'll get an email in the next couple of days as well, and you can register for that, okay? And I think the food's gonna be good. December 20th, so we're gonna try and do some different things over the winter. We'll have our regular club meetings, because I think we're gonna be virtual for a while yet, um, but we're gonna try and do some different things as well. So December 20th, we're actually going to have an outdoor winter barbecue in my backyard. And Chef Mike is going to do the food. It's going to be a barbecue. It's food and wine. And we did one last year in the middle of February. And it was pretty well received. Everybody kept warm. It was good food. I have tents and I have walls around the tents and we have heaters and... We have all kinds of things to, to keep us warm, um, but it's a way that we can actually get together in person because it's outdoors. But I will say it's absolutely limited to 20 people because I have maybe eight tables around the backyard and we wanna keep so safe and socially distanced. But um, so we'll announce when uh, the tickets go on sale and it's first come, first serve. So the first 20 people will get to sign up, okay? January, we know we're gonna be virtual, but who knows what we're gonna do. And we're thinking about doing something for Valentine's Day, a chocolate and wine pairing for Valentine's. So check out the Burlington Wine Club website. And also, of course, we'll give you notices of anything that's coming up. So tonight, important stuff. We've got Penelope from Henry of Pelham. Welcome, Penelope. And I'm really looking forward to hearing you talk about the wines and things and your sense of humor. And Steve Demora, some of you have probably met before if you've been out to Vienna or in, um, uh, anyway, he's gonna talk about the Vienna wines, okay? And the first of which is the sparkling. So, Thank you. 
uh, Burlington Wine Club and Teresa for having us. Am I coming through okay? Yep, absolutely. Great. So uh, <laughs> I'm sure all of you uh, know Momenti um, and have tried it, and thank you for supporting it. So, you know, uh, at Vienna Estates, uh, we produce all of our sparklings in the Charmat method. And uh, this is one of our staples here, this Momenti. It's uh, probably one of our best sellers. Um, I heard someone make a comment earlier, I believe it was Marilyn, saying that she senses a little bit of a difference in it. Hopefully not in a bad way, though, Marilyn. Never, never. Um, <laughs> however, so I believe what Mara was going with this is that in the past years, and you were absolutely correct, we had a little bit of a Pinot Grigio in the background. Uh, this time, as you see, if you have the bottle in front of you, it's just a, a Videl and a Pinot Meunier. So there was the difference. Uh, I, I guess it probably comes across a little drier than before. And, uh, but still, you know, in, in our, the method we do with this, the Charmant method, it's, it's really crisp and light. It's fun. The price point, it's, it's very, you know, festive for any day of the, <laughs> of the week. I mean, you know, at $13.95, it's a fantastic product. As you know, um, the residuals on it are at about $13.14. The acidity's at five. It, it's a great product for us at the end. We are uh, producing a lot of the sparklings up in the, uh, in the bench area and uh, throughout Niagara. We're doing nine different sparklings now. Um, for those of you who have come out and uh, have gone through our portfolio, you have to make a few stops. So this is, uh, like I said, one of our staples. It's Momenti. Uh, it's great anytime. It's, uh, you know, we, it's an homage to the Prosecco style that Mauro, our winemaker, uh, is from Veneto. And uh, he's really proud of it as, as we are. Uh, it's won numerous awards. And uh, we're just happy to have it and uh, share it with everyone. So enjoy. Mm -hmm. Excellent. So cheers. Sante. Again. Sante. <laughs> Okay, I'm gonna back up one side. So just talk a minute about uh, wine events and promotions. So if you go to the Burlington Wine Club CA events area, that's when that's where we'll post the Christmas party or the Christmas dinner, the barbecue, anything that's coming up will be there. And then the other thing we have, which we've talked about before is we have a promotions page um and so if there are any specials from any of our partners so and i'll say henry pelham and um Vienne, if you have any promotions or sales or anything let us know and we will post it uh, on our promotions page and we also have a facebook page and we um we really like to promote our partners there as well we've got an instagram page and we have um uh, YouTube Burlington Wine Club. So video, this video will go up there and we have videos from Chef Mike, Chef Maggie, other things that we've done with the club. Okay, so check out the YouTube video and please, uh, Steve and Penelope, if you have any specials or you have anything that you would like us to promote for you, just let us know, okay? Will do. Excellent. Okay, so the first flight. So we've got two white wines and a rosé. So you guys have to pour your own, of course. Um, so how many people have the, do lots of people have the white wines, I hope? So we have the Bruce Trail. I'm gonna pour mine. And then we have the Fumé Sauvignon Blanc from Henry of Pelham. That. And we have a rosé as well. Awesome. So, the first one is the Bruce Trail. You want to talk about that, Steve? Sure. So this is one that uh, is kind of interesting to us. Uh, our founder, Pasquale, was quite fond of the Bruce Trail. He uh, it, it, it goes right to the back of our estate. As you walk out of the doors of the end and you walk the trail, you could start onto the Bruce Trail as you, you go down our laneway. And he used to spend hours and hours back there uh, with his grandchildren and just live. We, we spent time back there going for walks and he was just amazed by it. And when he, he did this label, it was like, ah, I'm going to come up with the Bruce Trail wine and the label. And uh, I like it so much. He goes, I'm going to donate some of the money to the conservancy to give back to them. 
and it's been really a good a good label for us. Um, we do it in the white that you, you're trying here. We have the rosé and the red, and it's a you know we get people from all over Canada calling and stopping in to purchase this for family members and friends who you know do a milestone trek on the Bruce Trail, or they'll come off of the trail from you know, onto the Vienna estate and they're like, hey, we just want to open a bottle of this Bruce Trail wine. So it's been really good. So we've uh, transitioned into doing the three wines now. And as you can see by the bottle cover, the uh, label there, um, it's got one of the, the flashes of the strikes that uh, the Bruce Trail Conservancy has uh, allowed us to uh, showcase on the bottle. So it's almost become like a, a collector's item for people of the Bruce Trail to come to Vienna for this wine. And uh, it's really, it's really light and crisp. Um, it's got some really nice characteristics in the background. Not a, not a super long finish, but with the salad that you're having, I believe that's why he's paired it. It just uh, livens up the dressing on you. So um, yeah, it's just, it's a really fun thing. Uh, it, it's now going to be part of our portfolio, probably right until we keep going there at Vienna because um, the support we've gotten from the people of Ontario, and especially from the Bruce Trail uh, hikers and the conservancy. So this is just a really great everyday table wine that can be enjoyed, whether you're hiking, uh, biking, or just like we're doing, zoom zooming today. You can just enjoy it. So have fun with your salad and enjoy this great Bruce Trail wine. So Steve, it's, it's kind of, to me, it's kind of an unusual combination of grapes. Yes. In the Bruce Trail. Yeah. So yeah. Wanna, well, it was it was one that, so you know, we... Riesling, a Pinot Gris, and... Yeah, it was one of those ones where we wanted to, you know, kind of showcase some of the things that we have in abundance at Vienna. And uh, if you know from coming to Vienna, we kind of play outside the boundaries quite often with some of our blends. And this is a perfect showcase of it. As you said, Teresa, it's, it's just one of those things that probably you think, ah, maybe it could, it might, but it does. And at the price point, like I said, we've had a lot of fun with it. It's just a very nice uh, everyday wine that you can share at any time. Yep. So try it with the salad, folks. Hope it works with the Village Greek. Um, so I, I will say that we didn't dress the Village Greek only because, of course, we make it ahead of time. And also we found that I, like, there's enough juices in the Greek salad that um, I was kind of hoping we could get away without a, 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 a formal dressing, um, but try it and try it with the, um, the Bruce Trail wine. Okay, I guess I jumped the shark on that because I thought it had like a Greek dressing on it. I don't have the, I don't have the salad. <laughs> yeah, because it mixed, it's mixed. Uh, okay. All of the, the tomato and feta and cucumber and olives and everything almost formed its own dressing. Perfect. Well, yeah. I, I think it, then it, it, it'd be perfect with the, with the feta cheese. Now knowing that that's in there and the olives, I think it'll be a nice balance of acidity right there for you. It'll cut some of the sharpness of the, uh, the cheese, the pungency. It'll just round out those olives. Yep. So anyway, let us know. Uh, I think you can do a thumbs up or a thumbs down. Um, yeah, people are loving the salad. Um, there has been a question about, is there a red variety of the Bruce Trail, Steve? Yeah. We do have a, a red. Uh, we, do, we have a red and a rosé, like I said. And uh, you could go on our website or call or stop in, and it's all of the labels are similar, but just the duff, uh, a little bit of a difference with the color on it and the, uh, the flashes and the strikes of the uh, Bruce Trail. Okay. So we're getting some thumbs up or thumbs down on the wine and food combination, Marilyn? Lots we of know? thumbs up. You can use your real thumbs or your electronic thumbs at the bottom yeah. of your Zoom call, whichever <laughs> your thumb is more appropriate. <laughs> Thank you, Sue. Okay. <laughs> All right, the second, the second white. So this is to you, Pamela. So the Fumé Sauvignon Blanc. And that goes with the, the Quiche Florentine. And it was actually a recommended pairing um, for your wine from your site, uh, which I thought was great and kind of embraced it. Excellent. Uh, you know, before jumping into the wine, because I, I want to give everyone a chance to sort of enjoy that 
amazing little salad. And the Vienna Bruce Trail uh, White is one of my favorites personally. Um, because I love what they've done with all of those varietals. I'm sort of a, a geek when it comes to blends. So I really love it when a winery goes out of the box and does some cool things. So I love that wine. Um, I have some on my rack behind me and uh, it was a really nice pairing. So just um, before you jump into the next wine, I'm sort of um, a little bit of a, a stand-up comedian wannabe. So I always like to start off everything that I do uh, with a little bit of humor. And not only that, uh, when I was taking the SOM program, the sommelier program, I always said that when I got out of jail, meaning when I graduated school, uh, I really wanted to take some of the pretentiousness out of wine uh, that it can be in, in places. And I always wanted to sort of put a, a, a sense of humor to it and make it fun and enjoyable for people. Um, so I wanted to start out just by saying that, um, did you guys know that wine makes you lean? Yeah, I can. Yeah, I see. People. This is a, this is a good thing to know. Explain more. <laughs> yeah. So wine does in fact make you lean. It makes you lean on tables. It makes you lean on chairs. Yeah, see, some of you are, are laughing, <laughs> and some of you are looking at me like with that face, like, oh yes, I've leaned on many things after a few bottles of wine. So. Uh, there's my first jokes, if that's any joke, sorry, if that's any indication of how this is going to go for us tonight. <laughs> so um, a little bit, first of all, I want to really thank uh, Teresa and Marilyn for having me on because I understand that this is Henry of Pelham's first time being invited to uh, Club's Tasting. So I'm super thrilled that um, I got invited to do this tonight. And I love the club and I love everything that, that you do and what you stand for. It's, it's really great to see everybody come together. And not only that, but um, I'm sure many people have visited the winery before. We're, you know, we're situated in St. Catharines. Uh, we've been there for a long, long time, uh, since the early settler days of the 1700s. But I like to sort of tell some funny stories about the Speck brothers that people don't realize. Um, you know, we can go into the history of winemaking and all that kind of stuff, but um, I always kind of like to say some, some cool stories. And not only that, but sort of where we are... Um, and how we've modernized our winery. Um, and first sight of that would obviously be the rosé in a can, uh, which was a really cool launch for us. Um, so I wanted to sort of talk about that before, uh, and please, by all means, you can taste the wine first, at least taste the wine uh, if you haven't already done so. Uh, please go ahead and then I'll, I'll talk about it in a second, but just a couple of things about the Speck Brothers, best bosses I've ever had, uh, amazing winery. They, uh, they first planted grapes back in 1984 uh, with their father, Paul Sr., and the first vintage came out in 1988. And it's interesting because if you ask the Speck brothers, uh, Paul, Matthew, and Daniel, they will say, oh, when we were kids, our dad had us out there planting grapes and digging up trees and doing all this. And I say, okay, guys, but wait a minute. You were actually 17, 14, and 10. That's not little kids. So I always kind of make a joke about that, that they weren't really that young. They were, they were old enough to know. Uh, but nonetheless, a, a cute little story is that they're, they actually decided, and this was a huge, huge risky move, but they decided um, that they were going to dig up all of the Concord and Niagara grapes and do a replanting. So back then, again, it was considered a real risky move for them, but um, obviously it turned out to be very, very good for Henry of Pelham. Uh, we are 100% VQA winery only, and we've got, you know, tons of award-winning wines. But when the brothers were tasked to go out and dig a line, they were told to plant in a straight line. So obviously one brother would go up ahead and dig, and the next brother and the next brother. When their father came out to look to see how they dug, it was not actually in a straight line. It literally zigzagged down the vineyard. Uh, and you can sort of still see that to this day. Um, and they, I guess the story goes is that um, it puts some stress on the vines and stress vines produce the best wines. So it's a cute little story. You can bug them about it. if you ever go to the winery then tell them you know about that story. Mm -hmm. So does everyone have the Henry of Pelham Fumé Sauvignon Blanc ready to go? Oh, lovely, yes, perfect. This was one of my favorite launches from us. Um, although the original plantation or planting was done back in 1999, 
because uh, we do make Sauvignon Blanc. We have a classic run of it. This was sort of like a, a really cool project from the winemaker because it was something very different. There's not a lot of Fumé Sauvignon Blanc being made or, or grown, planted or produced, sorry, in Ontario. So we were, you know, really, really excited about this. Um, and not only that, but we have 3,000 liter and 5,000 liter foudre, wood foudres in our, in our winery that we wanted to put to good use. So this is not 100% stainless steel. The reason why it has that fumé on it is because it's actually partially fermented in the 3,000 liter foudre and 50% is done in stainless steel. So when, you, when I blind taste this to sommeliers, uh, I don't tell them it's from Ontario. I don't even tell them what it is. What's exciting is that the first thing is they, they're not sure what it is, uh, and I always kind of love that, uh, and they're not sure where it's from either. Uh, a lot of people would never guess that it's an Ontario wine or an Ontario white. It's got a very cool, fruity uh, start to it. Uh, around mid-palate is where you start to get that fumé or that smokiness to it on the palate, and then it finishes with a little bit of the alcohol uh, and some of that acidity. I feel like it's a very, very well balanced wine with the fruit and the acidity. And then you, again, on the finish, you, and if you click your, your tongue a little bit, so everyone can hear that properly, you do get that smoke, a little bit of that smoke on your palate that's left. And, and that's what I really love about it. And with this quiche Florentine, um, all of those elements, each time you have a bite of the Florentine, um, I think you can probably get four bites out of it, although I could probably crush the whole thing in one bite, but, uh, and then you have some of the wine. It sort of plays with your palate a little bit. What did everyone think of that, that wine and that pairing? Yeah. Oh, some thumbs up. Oh, I love yeah. those thumbs. thumbs up. John is saying the quiche <laughs> is delicious, uh, changes the wine flavor nicely. Thank you for that comment, John. Yeah, thanks, John. Mm -hmm. And that's, and of course, that's the ideal, right? So you have a good wine, you have a nice food, but if, you, if, if you've got the right combination, it makes the wine better and the food better. And that's, that's, that's what we strive for. Absolutely. Don't forget the company that you're with. Oh, yes, <laughs> yes. And you know what? You can even have terrible food and great company and everything <laughs> that you <can> <laughs> I always say that the uh, most of my wines that I drink is uh, it pairs well with air, so meaning I just drink it on its own. I like air, but I, another comment. And you that said I you were here, raised in Europe. You said you were raised in Europe. So how can that be? Because Europeans rarely have wine without food. Um, I tasted a lot in the wineries, and there's no food around. <laughs> just oh, okay. I am a right. cracker. <laughs> so, um, yeah, that's where that, that comes from. But I, another really great comment in the chat um, was from Beth and Martin. Um, and they mentioned that Martin rarely enjoys Sauvignon Blanc, but this one is quite nice. That's probably one of the best compliments we can get uh, on a wine is someone that says, you know what, I really don't drink Sauvignon Blanc, but I, but I like this one. So that's a great comment uh, from Martin. Real men don't eat peach. <laughs> That's fabulous. So, oh, yeah. uh, Penelope, uh, I've been to a few other uh, wineries in Niagara, and they, they refer to it as a Fumé Blanc. Is that the same as a Fumé Savion Blanc? You got it right. Exactly. So, oh. sometimes it's just a play on words. Um, you know, sometimes it's, it's also dependent on what, uh, how much Sauvignon Blanc they're using in the wine as well. And, and sometimes they'll do a little bit of a blend. If they use less than 5%, um, it doesn't actually have to be on the label, but we've chosen to put it fully on ours. It is 100% Sauvignon Blanc. So um, yeah, it's the same, it's the same yeah. thing, though, essentially. So Fumé, so if I can just, my two cents word. So yeah. Fumé Blanc is actually a Robert Mondavi marketing term. He invented the term for an oaked Sauvignon Blanc, and it was a play on um, um, Puy Fumé in the Loire, which is a smoky Sauvignon Blanc from that particular area. And so he just, like an oaked Sauvignon Blanc, and then it was 
kind of adopted all across North America. You won't see that term in Australia or New Zealand or any place else, but across North America, a fumé sauvignon blanc or a fumé blanc is a at least partially oaked sauvignon blanc. That's just the traditional term. You got it. <laughs> See, we're learning. Look at us, let's, look at us learning. <laughs> it's awesome. Okay, so what do we got next? That's to you again, Penelope. Yeah, so exciting. Uh, so would we like another joke? <laughs> Absolutely. Oh, I bet you, see, I, I'm a big fan of Anne down there because Anne laughs at all everything that I say. So. Um, I wanted to let everyone know that Henry of Pelham uh, has come up with a new line that hopefully we'll be launching soon. Uh, and it's to actually address um, the fact that, you know, the more wine we drink, the more we have to run to the loo. We're, we're always running to the washroom the more <laughs> wine we drink, right? That's, you know, usually an issue with me. Uh, so, you know, I, I thought, hey, I have a really great idea for a new wine. So we're going to launch a new wine to address this, and it's going to be called Pee No More. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> so we'll see how well that does. <laughs> have the brothers approved this? <laughs> well, this is a total <laughs> joke. I'm just kidding. <laughs> So we have our uh, house wine company, Rosé, which is a really cool modern launch this year. We have actually produced this um, back in 2010 in the bottle. Um, it's always been available during Rosé season. It tends to be one of the first wines that we sell out of, which is great. So it's quite popular. Um, you know, there's, there's still that sort of stigma about drinking wine out of a can, but couple of things that I really, really liked uh, with the direction that we went with this was the size of the actual can. Um, you know, it's a small can. It's great. You can take it on the boat or camping. Uh, you can shove a bunch of them in a, like a golf bag uh, or that kind of thing. Uh, so it's actually, it was, it's just a really fun sort of launch. And I thought the label was really cool. It has sort of like a chalkboard feel to it. Uh, very modern, really cool uh, and quite crushable, quite drinkable, patio friendly. Much like uh, the Bruce Trail sort of uh, way that they took a bunch of grapes and they made a really cool, oh, <laughs> someone said, wait, you can drink when you golf. Um, <laughs> how can I get this the best way? Uh, yes, if you're golfing in your backyard. <laughs> That's all I'll say about that. <laughs> so, um, yes, yeah, so we kind of took a, a few really interesting grapes to make this rosé. Some of this is actually Beth and Martin. Uh, so the, the actual breakdown is Videl Blanc. That is the predominant grape. So it's 85% that goes into the makeup of this, followed by Riesling. Sorry, oh. Sorry Penelope, what was the grape again? Um, it's Videl Blanc. Okay. Yeah, so we use 85% Videl Blanc because we wanted... You know, some of that sweetness, although a Vidal Blanc uh, tends to be a little bit drier than a, than a regular Vidal. Um, and then we did Riesling because we grow a lot of Riesling and we do a really great dry Riesling. Followed by Zagelt, which uh, I pronounce as Zagelt, but Teresa, how do you pronounce it? Because there's different... Zagelt. Zagelt. Yeah. Zagelt. Yeah. Zagelt. Yeah. Zagelt. Uh, we use only 2% Zagelt in there, but uh, that adds some of the fruitiness to it. Um, that I really like. Uh, and then a small percentage of Muscat and a very small, like two-ish percent of uh, Gewürztraminer. Mm -hmm. I love Gewürz. So, so where is the color coming from? So the color predominantly comes from the Videl Blanc. So we leave this, so the Videl Blanc, the skins of the Videl Blanc, uh, well, predominantly in our vineyard, tends to be a little bit darker. And so... Okay. So yeah, it's actually a very cool process. So we leave the skins on a little bit longer and then you get that sort of, um, I call it kind of jammy because it's not a, it's not like a Provence style light colored rosé. It's a little bit on the darker side and that's predominantly where it comes from. Hmm. So just from a little longer skin contact? Great. Sorry? So from just a little longer skin contact? You got it, exactly. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. 
Yeah, because, and you know, it's funny because um, I, I sort of had the same facial expression and I had that question when we first sampled this because mm -hmm. I said, wow, it's awfully pink. Like what, out of that list of grapes, what's given us that color? But then when we went and, you know, started looking at the grapes and when, you know, prior to them going into the crusher, um, that's when I realized, oh, look at that skin contact. The longer it left out, left on, it really became this beautiful pink sort of dark color and um hmm. yeah that's what you get from it okay i think we had a question you're making an you're making an impression uh penelope um maya would like to know does the rosé come just in a can no so it's available in the bottle the 750 ml bottle also uh it actually started out in the in the glass bottle first the can we literally just launched uh, this year. It's brand new for us. Uh, and then believe it or not, we also um, have it in keg because we have a lot of restaurants that will um, do wine on tap. And this wine was available in the keg. Uh, it started last summer and it was really popular. Mm -hmm. hmm. Do you have to be a restaurant to get the keg? <laughs> for a friend? <laughs> uh, I have one in my wine cellar right here. <laughs> Yeah. When I go golfing in my backyard. <laughs> um, another great comment from John. Um, he was considering skipping this round, uh, which is interesting um, because, oh, now I, I, it says from John, but then it says girl. So I'm assuming maybe somebody else is using John's computer, maybe? John's trying not to be a rose girl, but you've converted him. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, it's Angela. Uh, but, and I love here, um, it says, I'm not a rosé girl, but wow. I really, really love that comment. That's, that's a fabulous comment. Uh, that tomato soup, by the way, uh, really darn good. Really good. <laughs> Thank you. So, you know, to me, colors are part of the matching process as well. So... A rosé and tomato soup and also it's getting cold out there and so whenever it gets cold I think soup and um, yeah so that's just a homemade tomato soup really really simple um, not terribly complex but hopefully balanced with the rosé again you guys will let me know yeah I hope everyone likes that pairing I thought it was really tasty um, I felt like the rosé really brought out the, almost like um, a roasted tomato flavor in that soup. It was uh, really interesting. I really loved it. It was a great pairing. Oh, good. Okay. So again, cheers. Cheers, everybody. Hopefully everybody's having their soup and their rosé. Did anyone try it uh, right out of the can? I'm curious. No, no. <laughs> <laughs> We're very sophisticated. No. <laughs> Sorry. No, you know what? Never I, even occurred to me to drink it from the can. <laughs> I have the same feeling, uh, too. But, you know, for tasting purposes, when we first sort of started talking about doing anything in a can, you know, the brothers uh, have been in the wine business for quite some time. So to them, even marketing uh, a wine in a can was just something really kind of interesting for them. Mm -hmm. So when we were all looking at tasting it, um, I, I still thought it's important to taste it out of the can because there's going to be a, a, a huge percentage of clientele that, you know, will in fact drink this out of the can, you know, when they go really? camping, right? Uh, my yeah. first preference was to pour it into a glass, but then I also needed to know what it tasted like out of the can. Um, and it's actually not bad. I just tried it, yeah, yeah. <laughs> given that you were, you were talking about it, and I thought, oh yeah, never occurred to me to drink it from the can, but it's actually not bad. And I, and I agree it with doesn't, you. doesn't really taint it. No, not at all. And, and that, that to me, that's one of the questions I get a lot from people is they say, oh, wine on a can. You know, is it going to be like that beer flavor? Like, is it going to be tinny at all? Uh, and, it's, and it's really not, because the tin, the can that we use is... is not a beer tin, it's, you know, it's a different style of tin, so. So you know what, it's very scary, but I would probably drink this from the can. Mm. Can someone record that? 
please. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I did not say that. <laughs> no, seriously, it doesn't. It doesn't, uh, it doesn't. it doesn't actually harm it. It's not. It'd be, it'd be really fun for tailgating. Yes. Yes. Yeah. It. And remember, you're not drinking alone if the dog's at home. So. That's right. You got it. <laughs> um, I just wanted to make a note really quickly. How you know? I'm. And yes, we can. Yes, you got it, Beth and Martin. Um, you know, one of the hurdles, of course, is, is tasting sommeliers sometimes uh, on some of the wines. Uh, and, and, you know, I, there's times when, uh, you know, I don't even say it's from Ontario. I'll just like literally brown bag it or I'll, I'll hide the label and I'll do like a, you know, a, a blind tasting, if you will. Uh, and one of my favorite comments, uh, you know, is obviously things like, wow, I didn't know that was from Ontario. This is amazing. But Teresa, the, the greatest thing that you can say about a wine in a can is, is for a psalm to say, or a sommelier to say, you know what, I, I would actually drink this out of the can because it didn't change the flavor at all. And that's exactly what we need to hear. So thank you for that. Hey, hey Penelope, remember when uh, beer can chicken was really popular? Maybe you yep. have a nice house wine rosé chicken going on. Let's do there it. Go. Let's, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Let's partner. Next, next barbecue, Marilyn. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Teresa's barbecue. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm thinking maybe a quail, though, something smaller, you know, because <laughs> the can is so petite. But let's have a meeting. Let's have a meeting. Okay. Of course. Rosé I want credit for that. <laughs> okay, if there aren't any more questions, Marilyn, you tell me. And uh, then I'm, uh, an interesting comment from Anne, and, I, and I, I'll just throw it out there because I'm not certain if she's um, saying it in jest, um, but I think it's an interesting comment. Can we use the soda stream to make it into a sparkling rosé? It has, a, I feel, a little bit of effervescence there, but I don't know. What would you th say to that, Penelope? Yeah, so that's a great question, uh, and believe it or not, I've had that question so many times, uh, and uh, I have a soda stream, and I... I put everything with bubbles in it. Uh, I play around with it. Um, so you can in fact do it. The only thing is, is that it tends to lose the bubbles very quickly because of the, the alcohol and um, just sort of the, the way that it's made. Um, so yeah, you, you can in fact do it. Uh, but again, it, it, the bubbles dissipate pretty quickly. So you have to drink it faster, I guess. I don't want to say. <laughs> <laughs> nope. See, there's no dumb questions. There we go. Never, never. There never is. <laughs> I think we're on to the reds now, Teresa. Okay. So, Steve. Yes. Are you still with us? I am with you. Okay. Awesome. All right. You know what? You haven't. Uh, so, uh, folks, if you haven't poured your reds, please do. And Steve, the first one is awesome, Gamay Noir. Yeah, this is uh, this is really fun for us up at VNE because, as you know, we're, or if anyone's ever met Mauro, he's uh, you know very Italian to say the least. <laughs> and uh, I don't think we went out, you know, to like do really great. I mean, we always go out all of us Ontario wineries and producers to make great wines. But this wasn't one of those ones like, you know, that Vienni goes, oh, we want to be known for our Gamay Noir. Although it's kind of ironic because we are becoming known for our Gamay Noirs. And uh, we've actually won two gold medals with our Gamay Noirs. And our first one was actually the Ontario Wine Awards, Tony Asplund in 16. It was a total shock to us because it's one of those ones that, oh, we enjoyed it and, you know, we put it in there and we won gold and then we won the six nations wine challenge with it. And, um, you know, it, it's one of those wines and I, you know, Penelope can chime in on this is that it, it's one of those ones that's becoming almost really like a nouveau chic wine to have. Like it's not one of those ones that people are set out. Oh, I, I want to come in and taste the Gamay Noir, you know, but we got people coming in now and going, I'd like to start with the Gamay Noir or even sometimes over a Pinot Noir. They're going, you know, I, I hear Ontario Gamays are really coming into their own, and they are. And it's a really great for us because, you know, it's one of those grapes that, you know, they, they usually ripen very early, and our cool climate enhances those flavors. You know, you, 
it just everything's coming into play for Ontario, specifically for the Gamay Noirs. They're really wines that shouldn't be looked over, you know, and um, up at Vienna, we're really proud of our Gamays now, and we're, we're looking forward to continuing to make them. Um, people are starting to really catch on to the Ontario feel of that. We have Gamays here that are, are characteristic, characteristically just a bit different than everywhere else because of that cool climate. And it's really fun because, you know, people like, oh, they're too light, but really these Gamays coming out of Ontario, really, all you can say is they're fantastic medium bodied wines. And they really are. The colors are, are very vibrant on them and, and, and the mouthfeel is just fantastic. I mean, you know, they're fresh, they're fruity, they have a little bit of hint of pepper. They're just really great um, wines that can be paired with a lot of different things. And I see you have chicken, which is a great one to pair it with. And uh, up at Vienna, I mean, we do a lot of um, different things there. As you know, we were boasting over 45 wines and spirits now. But we even do, because uh, our Gamays were so happy with the way they've uh, come uh, over the last few years is that, you know, we, we do the Beaujolais styles, which we call the Novello Nouveaux. And if any of you have come out to any of our events, we um, host our launch, usually the second or third week of November. So look forward to that on our website where we do try to do like uh, nice foods and chestnuts going with our, um, you know, our uh, Novello. But this Gamay is just fantastic. I, I really like that. It's, uh, it's just a... It, I want to say a simple wine with that, you know, little twist on it, but that pepper and, and the fruit forwardness of it, it's just, it's really fantastic. And it's a great testament to what's happening up on the Vimont region in Ontario. Gamay's, they should not be overlooked. I mean, these are one of my favorite go-to wines. I mean, because if you have someone that says, well, I, I don't really like a heavy red, but you know, I want something a little heavier than a pizza. These Gamay's are where they should be at. And I, I, I think, you know, Ontario on their own, especially um, where we are at Vienna, we're making some great ones, as all of my colleagues are. But these wines should not be overlooked. They should be on heavy rotation from all the VQA wineries Ontario because they're just great wines that, that, that should be shared and are so easy to pair with numerous different dishes. And so, you know, pour a big glass and have at this one because we're really happy with the Gamay's. So I really like this Gamay. And um, so I, and I've tried most, if not all of the Beaujolais at all the different levels from France. And I think our Ontario Gamay Noirs, because Gamay is the grape in Beaujolais, um, they, they hold up well to like a Cru Beaujolais. And this was probably the most complicated pairing, not terribly difficult, but uh, chicken confit with a blackberry sauce. So a long, slow process, lots of flavors, lots of spices, some fruit. And I'm hoping that it helps to showcase the gamay. That was, that was the plan here. <clears throat> Right. Now, uh, just out of curiosity, because again, I don't have the dishes in front of me, but you know what I always like to do, and I'm sure the chef that prepared your stuff, hopefully they did, um, you know, those sauces, you can really play up the flavors of the wine that you are drinking by having whoever's cooking for you add a little bit of that, you know, to the sauce or the marinade. It, it just, it, it's amazing how it intensifies your, your taste buds and, and really picks up on those notes and those sauces. Mm -hmm. Now, in this case, I didn't use the, I didn't actually use the gamay in the sauce, but um, I used um, blackberry spices, mm -hmm. anyway, whatever, and a 12-hour <laughs> chicken confit process. <laughs> so you could have probably drank a few bottles of this gamay in the making then. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> it's more than one glass, 12 hours. Yes. Yeah. I loved yeah, the yeah. pairing because I felt like that blackberry sauce um, was really nice and fruity, but not sweet. It had a little tartness to it. And Perfect. it really pulled the pepper from that stunning Gamay. I love the Viennese Gamay. Uh, we also produce a Gamay at Henry of Pelham, but it's mm -hmm. a very small production and it's 
at the winery only, and it tends to sell out really quickly. Um, but I drank the Vienni Gamay, like we were actually, you know, doing a blind taste and, and the Vienni came out top, like a lot of us voted that one as our favorite. Well, thank you. Yeah, it's so beautifully done. And I really love what you said about sort of where does this fit in the wine profile? And you're right. Uh, you know, once people move out of whites and they start drinking reds, you can drink Pinot. I mean, I'm still a big Pinot Noir fan. I love Me Oregon too. Pinot. Love it. Yeah, I love, you know, Ontario does some fabulous uh, Pinots. But, you know, when you want to start getting into something a little bit heavier on the palate, especially now that we're coming into colder weather and winter, um, Gamay is, is fabulous. And, and I love um, that it sort of takes you to that next step in the reds. Oh, yeah, absolutely. It's, nice it's a fantastic, wine. it's a fantastic transition wine to get people into the other great um, bolder reds of Ontario because, you know, and in fact, these are one of the wines, these Gamay's, I'm feeling that if, if we don't embrace them more here in Ontario, well, you know, once things get back to a little bit more of uh, where we can have people out from all over the world again, we get a lot of guests from outside of Ontario, all over Canada, the United States, like Finger Lakes area, upstate mm -hmm. New York, that they're going, hey, we really, we hear that the Gamay's down here are really, really good. And then they taste them and they're like, no, they're beyond good. They're spectacular. Like, we didn't know Canada had these types of wines. And it's Gamay. Who would have ever thought? Yeah, I agree. Well said. It's so true. Thank so, you. so Steve, I'm going to give you um, an opportunity based on some questions that we've received. And when, when Penelope comes up next, uh, the same question to her. Um, tell us how your business is operating in COVID times. How can we come and see you and, and experience uh, all the great wines that you have to offer? Excellent question. Well, um, and, and, and you know, that's, we want, we encourage people to come out and we're, we all have to kind of play by the rules now and their, the restrictions. Um, so we've done a few different things here at the uh, We will now, we can't with the weather changing, but we had a, a really nice patio where we've incorporated some of our traditions with, uh, you know, meats and cheeses. We're making these really nice antipasto boards and doing these really fun flights. But actually, uh, we're going to transition into doing more like a lounge feel with some themes to it around maybe some uh, music and some uh, decade themes, 70s, 80s type of feel and uh, we're going to do some really fun stuff with some foods you know some nice shareable plates and um, so we're going to have that pretty much on Fridays, Saturdays and Sundays through the week we're open 24-7 at Vienna Estates um, <laughs> reservations are always recommended so that we can secure a spot for you but please just call look on the website um, it, it's been a bit of a challenge but you know we, we, we're, we're doing very well there's been a huge support from our are, um, from the from the local people, which which we want, which are the people of Ontario. They, uh, you know, it's 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 in their backyard, and I mean, you all know the song, "Good Things Grow." Help me out, people in Ontario. So <laughs> let's not forget that because it, it is a true testament to the you know the the passion and the drive that people have, and and we haven't stopped through COVID because we know that people, you know, things are, are continuing to move on. And the grapes don't stop, and it's been a wonderful, wonderful year. As uh, you know, I'm sure you were talking with in the wine club, and uh, Penelope can attest to this that the growing season this year was just fantastic. Everything else was a little bit, you know, crazy. But you know, it, it's to move forward, we just got to keep on, um, you know, playing by the rules, and uh, so we can all enjoy what we have, you know, because we don't, you know, two steps forward, one back. We, we want to stay constantly ahead of what's going on so you know just touch base before you come out we love to have you you know uh, us Vienni go down the street to Henry of Pella our doors are open there's big smiles on everyone's faces and uh, you know let's have some fun just be safe about it you know that's it thank you Steve and just one more question I think Teresa um, at your indulgence uh, before we move on to the next um, never had a chicken with blackberry i've always had chicken with cranberry <laughs> so i i wonder i mean it's a deliberate choice and it's a beautiful choice with the gamay what were your thoughts against something more traditional like a cranberry with with the chicken 
So you know what? The, so I tried blueberry before I settled on the blackberry, and I know cranberry. Um, I don't know. There's a there's a depth to the blackberry that to me just goes with the confit. Like it, the confit is um, I don't know strong enough and the blackberry and the gamay noir i don't know to me it would just i don't know it just worked <laughs> no i i think it's I, made a, it up. <laughs> no, I think it's gorgeous and and you've you've opened up all of our our palettes to that opportunity no more cranberry sauce at, at christmas <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness and so you know and it's funny there's a place for everything right but um anyway with the confit i don't know Blackberry is it for me. That was and a gamay noir. So so it was also the wine. So the the fruitiness of this wine, like and this uh, this wine has depth. Mm -hmm. Like it's not a light um uh, Beaujolais style, it's not a Beaujolais Nouveau style, it's a, I would say it's a cru gamay style. Solid, which requires substantial food and so to me the chicken confit and the blackberry sauce and um, held up to the wine or the wine or supported the wine excellent yeah and, and in this gamay there's a lot of spices in the background the nutmeg yeah. and the yeah. you know that you pick yeah. up on. very clove, subtle but you know and everything in yeah. yeah no excellent yeah it created umami for me, which is like a well-balanced, right? And, and when you're doing food and wine pairing, uh, when, when I learned at George Brown, you always want to have umami at the end. So you yep. want to balance. And, right. and I literally got that. But what was great for me personally about this pairing is that you, you got a little bit of elements in, on your palate. You didn't have to go and take a sip of wine to get the wine. You didn't have to now take another bite of food with the wine to get it. Like I felt like that wine sort of went through everything and you just, you got all elements of the wine, all elements of that blackberry sauce. It was like a little bit of fat, a little bit of fruit and some tannin and pepper and it was just fabulous. Well, exactly, like the tannins are very soft in the Gamay's coming out of Ontario. That's what I like about it. Even though it's a medium body, the mouth feel is so soft and mm -hmm. delicate. It, it, it's really nice. All right, Teresa, at your discretion, I, I think it's time. I see some people opening their cheese. Um, <laughs> yes, thank okay. All, thank you, so Steve. The Hamilton, uh, Merlot, and the cheddar cheese. Yeah. So, and, yeah. so cheddar cheese and chocolate is uh, always how we end our tastings. Okay, fun. Um, so the Cabernet, the cheddar cheese, and then this year we have a, because it's Halloween, we have a slightly different chocolate, but. Perfect. The um, camera low. Yeah. So um, one of the things that, you know, that I've learned uh, from being in the wine industry for some time is that uh, I feel like Cabernet Low in Ontario has really come a long way. And we've had some enormous breakthroughs with uh, reds in particular, but especially Cabernet Low. And our Cabernet Low um, has really changed over time. Also, if, if, if there's anybody um, in the tasting tonight that's had our Cab Merlot over the last few years. Um, it's really gotten richer. It's become more bold. Uh, it's definitely got some different sort of elements uh, to the character. And one of my favorite things about it is that it's got old world flavors uh, produced in Niagara. You know, you can drink an old world wine that's produced in Niagara. And I really love that. And it's a real- It's very it's, tricky to do, right? Super tricky. Yeah. super tricky and it's not just one thing that comes to play when you're looking to do that uh you really have to have a, a great balance with terroir and the wine making process and i feel like this is one of those wines that henry of helena has, has really perfected um and yeah a note from sue 2019 is noticeably different i one million percent agree with you and if you even went back further into the vertical and tasted previous years I feel like it's been, you know, sort of lighter to medium, and now it's getting heavier bodied. Um, although we do a quick fermentation with this wine because we want to extract the fruit, the juicy fruit flavors and the aromas, but we don't want to get too, too much tannin 
uh, from having it sit in wood for too long. Uh, so that's sort of a really, it gives it a freshness still to it. We don't want to lose the freshness of our, of our Cab Merlot that we produce here in Ontario. Mm -hmm. um, but interesting about this blend also is that it's predominantly, well, it's half and half. So it's 50% Merlot, it's 30% Cab Franc, and 20% Cab Soap. So um, it's, it's definitely a 50-50 blend. Uh, and I feel like that Merlot gives it a little bit of juiciness and sort of rounds it out because Cab Franc can tend to be a little on the peppery side. So I feel like that addition of the Merlot really kind of softens it out. So I have a question, given that that's the blend, is there a reason why you didn't call it a meritage or meritage? Or do you no. not use that term? We don't, we don't use that term. I, I, when I left Keller Estates to come and work for uh, well, I worked for Peller Estate for many, many years ago, and we used the term meritage or meritage. Uh, and I always mm -hmm. loved the term. I don't know. I felt like it was a sexy word, you know, meritage. <laughs> it was just sort of, I, yeah. I don't know. You can probably attest to this, right? Like, I, I don't know. I really like that, that <laughs> it, word. It's another word. Robert Mondavi um, marketing term. But it is. Hey. <laughs> yeah, it is for sure. Or even, you know, like words like assemblage or... You know, yeah. in Ontario, we tend to kind of stick with the word blend um, mm -hmm. because I think it's, it's, and anyone here that's been a fan of blends for a while, it's been a long road to try and get people on to blends, first of all, uh, from Ontario. But I feel like we're sort of on that cusp now where uh, people are starting to experiment uh, with their wines. And especially tonight, like with the Vienna wines, um, the blends are extraordinary. Uh, you know, we're playing around with some some funky blends, some funky varietals, and um, so yeah, I think the brothers just never kind of wanted to use that word. Okay, just curious. Yeah. Okay, yeah, if, I, if I can chime in on that, Penelope, you're absolutely mm -hmm. right because the blends right now are some of our most sought after wines at Vienna. Just being able to play with the old world and new world type of thing and bring them together, they're really good things are happening with those. 100%, I agree, yeah. Do I need to run this you soon. <laughs> Do you think that's a reflection of the maturity of the region as well? Uh, I, me or for Penelope, because I have my view on it. I, yeah, go ahead. It, yeah, I mean, uh, it's, 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 yeah, but that, not only for the region and what's happening in Ontario, and especially up near where we are with the wines, but with the um, education of the consumers coming out to experience what we have, people are really knowing what they're, um, they, they want to come for, they're looking for a certain feel, and they're getting it. And then they're continuing to come back. And, and we're delivering 110%, I, I feel. The VQA Ontario wineries are delivering that experience, that feel, that, you know, where we weren't considered world-class wineries. And now we're beyond world-class. I mean, we're winning wine uh, competitions here. Yeah. We're winning them in the United States. We're winning them in Europe. It, it's, it's no secret that what's happening in Ontario is growing and thriving. And, you know, it, it, it's a testament to the passion behind the people that are doing and producing these things. And the education of our consumers coming out is so refreshing because, you know, it's great when they're asking for something and then they're sitting with us and they're saying, I really love this wine because, or I heard this. It's so exciting to get that. So please, when you come out to visit us, Henry of Pelham, tell us what you're liking because... You know, we play a strong role in what happens in the back, too, because we're tasting and we're testing things all the time. And we want to produce the best wines we can for our customers. Mm -hmm. And that's it. Thanks, Steve. Uh, maybe, Penelope, you see there's a question specifically to the Camerlo. It says age worthy on yeah. the label. Your comments on that, please? Yes. Yeah. That's a really great question, um, and it sort of goes along with um, my, one of the comments that I made about having old world flavors uh, made in Niagara. So that's, again, a testament to, you can lay this bottle down, uh, you know, ageability-wise, seven plus years, 
Mm. Uh, you know, I'm, I'm lucky that I work for the winery because we do oftentimes we'll do vertical casings and we'll go back into our library and, and pull, you know, 1995s and, or 98s. And I mean, just, they're literally, they're stellar. The, the ageability on it is, is, is crazy. Um, I always joke around though and say, uh, I, I can't test that theory because I drink my wines too fast. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so I wanted to give you equal time, Penelope. Tell us how Henry of Pelham is operating in the COVID times. How do we come and see you? Yeah, absolutely. So um, I did respond uh, briefly on the chat. I was saying about how, you know, it's been really tough on Ontario wineries, much like everyone, of course. But um, I feel, though, that as we've sort of all banded together and, and we've all come together, like we always, I always say we play well in the sandbox and we use each, you know, ideas from what other wineries are doing and then we share the wealth. Uh, we've made a lot of specifications for our winery. We have, you know, we're lucky that we have a huge boardroom upstairs in our store. We have four different tasting rooms um, and we've actually built on another one. Uh, we have a brand new bottling plant uh, or bottling building so we don't do any of that. That's completely separate now so we have a lot more space for people to come and taste. Uh, you know, and, and we're very, we've been really, really good about following protocols. We make sure that everyone is comfortable. Uh, we have a really cool new space that's upstairs in front of the, we've got a fireplace in the room, very socially distanced, but uh, it's nice to sort of sit indoors by a fireplace once in a while and, and do a little flight of wine. Um, so yeah, I mean, we're, we're open all the time. I always say, you know, try and get a, a tasting book. You can always contact myself uh, through Teresa or Marilyn, if you like. And I would love to set you up at the winery, um, you know, and when we can do so, I'd love to see all your amazing faces. It, it'd be, I'd love to host a, a tasting with all of you myself. Uh, but please do come and visit us. And we have a person, uh, Danielle, who's on the call that in better times um, organizes trips out to Niagara and Prince Edward County. And yeah, so, and that would be lovely. Great, yeah. I, I honestly, please contact me anytime and I would love to set you up with a tasting. And, and it, it is really important to try and get a booking done um, just because we do have a lot of walk-ins still, but if, if you have a, a designated booking, uh, we'll set you up at a nice table uh, and then you'll, be, you'll feel safe and you'll feel comfortable. Perfect. So lots of positive comments, uh, Penelope, on, on the wines you presented tonight and Steve as well. So, um, in light of the time, I, I, I feel this push-pull. Um, people don't want to drink. Noir. It's the last night of the, yeah. of the year, but I think we should move on to the back on noir. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. So uh, this is one of my favorite uh, releases that we did. And speaking of sort of where Ontario has come uh, over the last several years and talking about ageability, uh, I, I'm hoping everyone in the, in, on the tasting today has had an opportunity to taste our classic Baco or any of our Bacos, you know, throughout the years. Baco is certainly uh, a varietal that I feel Henry of Pelham has done extremely well. Uh, we are, you know, one of the pioneers of the grape. Uh, we always managed to do a really good job. But what I love about the old vines, um, and even as of late, we have a new one that we just lost, launched, sorry, called Lost Boys is that we're taking this amazing grape, Baco Noir, which has kind of become, um, it's very, it's like an anomaly grape, if you will, but uh, it's, it's got a cult following. We had a really cool write-up in the Star about it, uh, saying that it is a, a definitely a cult, we have a cult following behind it. But it's one of those wines where our winemaker has really grabbed a hold of it and done some cool things to it. Thus, the old vines, Baco Noir, 2019. Um, it's really, really cool because we are still considered new world. We produce new world wines, but we are now old enough where we have, you know, vines in the ground that are 30 plus years old. So uh, in order to be considered old vines, it has to be at least in the ground for 20 plus years. That's the sort of the stipulation, which is what this, these vines are. Um, it's, it's aged probably the old, some of the oldest out of a lot of our wines at 12 months. Uh, it's aged in smaller barrels, American Barriques in the beginning. Uh, and then it finishes the aging process in 5,000 liter uh, oak, uh, food, 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 French, so for me to, to go back <laughs> to in English, I feel silly sometimes. So it's food, 
so food rows. Thank you. So it's finished in those food rows, and that's that's really what gives it this smokiness. Uh, this wine for me has such depth to it and so many layers. Uh, it's got smoke, cocoa, uh, and when I say smoke, it's like a campfire smoke. So not a cigarette smoke, more like a campfire. Or if you were to smoke the barrel, that sort of flavor profile comes through in this wine. It's got a, such a re rich, dark chocolate profile to it also. Um, and couple, I, I guess, yeah, so back in 1984, these, these were the vines that were there and planted and we watched and waited for them to grow, all of us in anticipation. And I was so thrilled when we launched this. And this chocolate and of course, is, you guys are historically known for your Baccar Noirs. Like you set the stage for Baccar Noir yeah. way back then. And they were very different in the early days. Yeah. So, and I think you still have some, like, so Baccar Noir can be very, very funky, right? Yeah, it can. Like, just different, in a good sense, um, yeah. an odd flavor. And so now you seem to have both those Baccos and more softer Baccos, but still retaining the flavor of the yeah, and I, I feel probably the number one thing, like we've kept our secret and we've kept pretty good consistency, I'd have to say, in our Baco Noir. And it's because uh, we don't overage it. If you were to, Baco Noir can actually be quite finicky as a varietal. Um, and so it's kind of like my dog. He gets a little mm -hmm. barky sometimes, but I don't pet him the right way. So Baco is much the same way. If you overage it, so much, if too much tannin comes in, it just now all of a sudden becomes very tart. Um, it really takes away the fruit. You still get like that smoke and cocoa, but you, you lose all the fruit complexity to it. Uh, and that's what helps Baco to be what it is, is you really need a lot of that fruit. It looks like we, on the chat, we have some cult followers. <laughs> yeah, of your traditional ones. <laughs> yeah. So, um, so the, the Halloween truffle tails, Halloween truffle that you have in your bag. So that's, um, so we don't have the normal uh, chocolate that we usually do. And around Valentine's Day, we're going to have a chocolate and wine tasting with this company. So they provided the, the Halloween truffles for us. Um, but we'll hear more from from them. They're a great company. And I think with the Baca Noir, uh, you know, chocolate is perfect. <laughs> yeah, I yep. agree. They're located in Hamilton, and Penelope actually has a connection to Chocolate Tales. We had a lovely conversation at our... Oh, at really? Our yeah, she's actually, in addition to being a psalm, she's a chocolatier. Oh, my goodness. Okay, so we need to yeah. talk even more. I love, you know, they're an amazing company and their chocolate is some of the best I've ever had. Um, but I had to quit because I was eating more. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. That's not why I love it. Uh, you know, I, he was super busy and I could have worked, done that job full time, but um, they're an amazing company. So I was thrilled to see that you, uh, you partnered with them. Yeah. So we're going to have, we'll have at least one event with them, if yeah. not more. I'm going to join so I can come. Absolutely. Okay. So, and you guys are welcome to stay on the call and talk and everything else, but thank you, Penelope and Steve. So your wine, both the wines were great, the, or all of the wines were great. Um, Marilyn, thanks always. You're my right-hand person. Um, the food and wine kits, Dorothy, Lorraine, Carl, and Anne, and Trust me, they brave the cold because um, in these times, nobody's like in inside. We all, we do this outdoors, so they were at different tables outdoors in the cold with freezing knuckles. I know this, and um, anyway, they put all the kits together, which was great. So we're going to have two order forms because we get two companies this year, and or 
this month. And Henry Pelham, so all the wines from tonight will have on the order form and you can order them. And um, of course, uh, Henry Pelham provided the rosé in the kit and the corkscrews, which were just awesome and good quality. And they're the Smollier corkscrews. I'll yeah. have you know. So Vienni is offering a 15% discount on, I say most wines, because they're a pesimento um, and they're spirits. So it's not everything in the shop, but all their wines, um, and just for the BWC and just for this order next week. Okay, so we'll, we'll tell you more, but we'll have two different order forms and um, you can uh, stock up before Christmas. So check the promotions page as well for additional specials on our partners. And again, partners, if you have any specials, let us know. Um, the virtual Christmas dinner, the tickets are on sale now and a notice will be going out soon. And of course, the wine and dinner will be a pickup at Maryland's as usual. So it's going to be the same kind of process. Um, but Maggie's doing the dinner and... Anyway, it'll be a dinner and, and wines that we've chosen. I think that's it. Uh, it, it is almost it. Uh, it is our tradition okay. for those who wish yes. to participate. I'm yep. going to move my screen to a full gallery view. Yep. If you don't wish to be uh, seen on camera, please let us know. But it's uh, our pleasure to take a picture of all of us together, especially at the end of this year. So yes. I'm it's our going last, It's our last club. For 2020. Yeah, 2020. <laughs> <laughs> so if you're if you're willing to share yourself and the and the wines that you have, I'm going to give you a five second countdown in just a second. And and before I do that it, I would be remiss without saying thank you, Teresa, for your leadership and guidance for keeping us all together and giving us one bright light out of 30 days to come together. <laughs> and it, 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 without you, it, it doesn't happen. So I'm gonna give you a five second countdown. Grab your favorite beverage, put on your best smile, friends, and I'm gonna give you a five second and we're gonna do a couple of screenshots here, okay? okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Cheers, cheers. <laughs> Thank you so much. Awesome. Oh. Mm. Fantastic. Yeah. Fantastic. <laughs> thank you for that. Awesome. Thank you, Burlington Wine Club. It's been a pleasure. Teresa, thank you for putting it together. My colleague Penelope, come on, stop on by. I'd love to see you. And uh, yeah, don't be strangers, guys. Coming out. We're still all open. Henry of Pelham's open. Come out and visit us both. Excellent. Love to have you. Yep. Thank you. And we'll take some wine and we'll take some wine orders over the next little while. <laughs> Excellent. Awesome. Everyone enjoy your evening. Ciao. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. Thanks, Steve. That Thanks. was Grazie. great. I was just there last week. I enjoyed it. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you, John, for your comment. Is this first tasting? Lots of fun. Thank you for that comment, John. Hi, Judy. Drop by my porch for a conversation anytime. <laughs> <laughs> I will also bid everyone to see everybody. Yeah. Yes. Sorry. You can uh, enjoy your evening. This was really special. I really, really enjoyed this. Um, I, I really love how everybody was so engaged and had some really great comments and not just wine comments, but I feel like there was a really good vibe tonight. Uh, I could feel it from everybody, the, the wine and the pairings that were really, really well done. Um, Teresa and Marilyn were, Amazing. We don't know each other very well, but I really loved working with you. Uh, you were so communicative, and this group looks so charming. I love seeing all your faces, and I would love to mm -hmm. do another one. Uh, and last but not least, um, please come and visit the winery. Or if you want, you know, to want us to host you, I, I would million percent. I would host you, uh, your group any day. So enjoy your evening, everyone. Uh, thanks, Danielle. Danielle. Keep that in mind, Mike. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, I visited you many times, Penelope. Oh, good. Yes, and uh, so I look at the wine rack, 
we, we're in a co-location. We sell your the old wine tobacco. Oh. We sell tons of it. Oh, that's so great. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, you're awesome. Amazing. <laughs> Enjoy your evening, everyone. Okay. And thank you, Penelope, for You're joining. Very welcome. Stay in touch. Yeah. And we'll talk soon. We'll talk right. soon. Good night and thank you. Good night. Ciao. Stay safe. Okay. Happy New Year. <laughs> Merry Christmas. Oh. Merry Christmas. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, everybody. Go. I'm going to go back to my cruise now. Yes, nice. <laughs>